<clears throat> Our main speaker today is Liz Lawyer. Not so long ago, she had her lower half of one of her legs amputated. She's here today with us to share how his, her life has changed since then, going through surgeries, transitioning to a wheelchair, and soon a prosthetic. She also wants to answer some of our questions and address some of our curiosities. So please help me welcome Liz Lawyer. Not really. Oh, there we. Ooh, there I am. Wow. Um, there's a story behind pedicures are half price. I was getting a, my last pedicure before my amputation, and I'm sitting like this. The lady's doing my pedicure, who is also a very good friend of mine. Over on that side, facing that wall, is the lady that does hair in the same place where I get my pedicure, and she had a woman in her chair doing her hair. So I looked at Vicki, who happens to be a very good friend of mine and understands I'm a little on the strange side. I said, you know what, Vicki? When I get my next pedicure, is that gonna be half price? And she and Cheryl, the hairdresser, started laughing, but I could see the face of the woman who Cheryl was doing, and she was going, <laughs> just astounded that we were laughing about the fact that I'm gonna lose a leg. But after, um, the amputation was surgery number 18, and I'd had so many operations and so many infections, it was like good riddance, which kind of threw the people in the hospital because they come in and see if you kind of need some psychiatric help. And just push this button. Oh. Okay, so in October of last year, I lost my leg. I had three failed knee replacements, multiple infections. I knew how to pronounce so many different various infections. I had one doctor ask me if I was a nurse because I knew how to say pseudomonas. And that was really fun. Um, I spent time in rehab afterward learning how to balance. Everybody stand up. Stand up. Pick up your left leg and balance. It ain't easy. Okay, you can all sit down now but you gotta learn how to stand up and spin and all kinds of things, transition from the chair to the bed, to, from the chair to the toilet. It, it can be interesting. I only fell once, so that was good. And it takes three or four months after surgery, a lot of people think, oh, well you have surgery and then they give you your leg. No, it takes three or four months for everything to heal, for the swelling to go down. My leg was about two times its normal size immediately after surgery. So it takes a long time. Um, physical therapy uh, teaches you how to do the transition, like I said. There's different levels. They're called K levels for kinetic, which I did not know until I lost my leg. Uh, K0 is the person who sits at home and does nothing. K1, um, you're pretty much gonna like move around the house, but not much more. Maybe go in and out of the car, maybe go shopping occasionally. K2 is a little higher level, and he goes all the way to K4. And those are the people that are like climbing Everest, which I'm not going to do. I've, my goal has always been to walk again and ride a bike. Those were my, that was the height of my activity with two legs. I'm not gonna go much more with just one. There are all kinds of legs that you can get. I have my one here that I'm gonna show you all later, but you can get a running leg, a hiking leg, a biking leg, um, a rock climbing leg. There's a shower leg, a water leg, um, and on the bottom you can see there's cosmetic legs, there's, you name it. Now the insurance company doesn't pay for those. You want to do one of those, it's coming out of your pocket. And they are anywhere from five to $10,000 a piece. Um, but you know, you can't let it stop you. I mean, I've got a picture there of somebody rock climbing. Um, you could even join the Congress if you really wanted to get in that mess. Uh, they have wheelchairs, as you can see, where you can actually go scuba diving in a wheelchair. Again, out of your own pocket, but hey, you know, if you're into it, you're into it. Uh, you can ski, you can water ski, you can run marathons, and you can even go on Dancing with the Stars if you have enough rhythm. I personally don't, but 
you know, she did great, I thought. Okay, every, the big question um, you get a lot of is the prosthetic, and this is mine, I call her Victoria. Hey, something this gets this intimate, it has to have a name. She weighs 11 and a half pounds. And every piece on this is custom made except the foot. All of this is custom made. They take a gazillion measurements of the length of your stump, the width of your stump, the length of your femur on your other leg so that hopefully your legs are now gonna be the same length um, with luck. Uh, it's adjusted several times. I was walking, but I had scar tissue that was tearing, so I had a revision surgery in July. And if you have any kind of an open wound on your stump, you do not put on your prosthetic because you're going, hey, I want an infection. Um, this is a temporary leg. It locks. I have a clicker here that once I take the weight off, it will bend. But this is to teach me how to walk, and right now I walk like a pirate. So I'm set for Halloween. I'm, I'm good. Um, the Celtic knots on the front, those are not standard. I did that just because I thought this thing was very just plain. It's heavy, it's 11 and a half pounds. Y'all are more than welcome to come up and feel it if you want to afterward or try and heft it. This is called a sleeve. This goes over the stump. The inside is really sticky and tacky. So this goes on first and then you put it in the socket. This goes through a hole in the front of the socket to help hold it on so that when you're walking you don't lose your leg. Um, this is uh, one type of leg. There's another one that's called a vacuum leg where you don't use one of these but there's literally a vacuum inside the, sto the socket. It just all depends on what you want and what you want to do. I'll pass this around. This is heavy too. So that's part of it. Um, I'm what's called a K, a, a K above the knee. Then you have a BK, which is below the knee. And below the knee, you, it's a lot easier because you still have your knee, which is your fulcrum. I don't have a knee. So this goes way up. You get very intimate with the guy who's fitting your socket. This goes way up, there's a bone on your bum, and that's what you do, and you actually use your bum muscles to walk. So coming out of physical therapy, I'm doing this, because my butt hurts. Uh, it goes right up into the crotch, so um, they, you, know, you have to realize that they're not doing anything fresh, they're just trying to make sure you have a socket that fits and you won't get a blister. <sighs> No, oh, my, and my final leg will have a automatic 30 degree lock so that I can walk. I mean, there's some people walking around that have artificial legs you don't know because they're so good nowadays. Sadly, because of the war and all the veterans, in the last 10 years, the strides in artificial limbs has just gone skyrocketing. Um, these are some of the frequently asked questions, so I thought I'd get those out of the way and then I'll take other questions. The first one, what physical limitations? Biggie, bathrooms. Uh, a lot of bathrooms are called handicapped. <laughs> the view, I don't know how well you can see it on the lower left, that's a handicapped bathroom. And I can get the chair in, but I can't shut the door. So that means you can't pee in private. You just, and fortunately, handicapped stalls are usually the very last one. And you will also see the sinks are all the same height. It's not a problem for me, but if you're somebody who's a quadriplegic and you can only lift your arms about this far, that's an issue. This is a real handicapped bathroom. By law, under ADA, you have to be able to get in the bathroom and do this. A 360 degree circle. And you could tell by that first picture, there was no way I was doing that. And you will notice that the sink on the closest is lower, so it's easier to get to. And there's a lot of times 
you know, the soap's way up here and the paper towels are way over here, so it gets interesting. The next biggest problem is stairs. They do have a, hand, a wheelchair that comes, this little ramp thing that will slide out. Uh, it is a $6,000 wheelchair, but you can go up and down stairs as you can see these people are doing. It, that's fairly new and um, they are not standard either. And then um, one of the biggest questions I had was, these are some others, it's like, do I feel whole as a person? And it's like, well, I lost a leg, not my brain or my personality. So yeah, I feel whole. I mean, hello. It's not like they chopped off part of my personality. Um, do I get depressed and mourn the loss? Yeah, occasionally I get really pissed. Uh, my biggest thing now is I can't get in and out of the car alone. I have to have somebody haul the wheelchair. Fortunately, I have very good friends that are willing to do that. I'm the member of a corral group in Clear Lake, and I just text them, and somebody comes out and gets the chair for me, and they walk out with me and help me get the chair back in. Thank God I bought a minivan. Didn't know it at the time, but it was a good thing. Um, how do I avoid letting the experience define my journey in life? You can either let it define you down or you can define you up. I was not going to give up. I've had so many people say, oh, you're so strong, I couldn't do it, oh my God. And I'm like, yeah, you could. You don't know until you face it. I've learned to break things down in little increments because obviously I have to be able to move the wheels and move around. Um, sometimes I'm a little too independent, which my husband will tell you. Um, I've gotten a lot more patient, and that was never my strong suit, so that was a big move for me. Um, has it affected my family life? Yeah, my husband has to be there to help me in and out of the chair, or the car. Uh, I have the dream bathroom, I'll tell you that. It was like putting a brand new car in the bathroom because we tore out the garden tub and put in a big huge rolling shower and decided while we're at it, let's just do the whole thing. So we tore out the old shower and made it a closet. And if you ever talk to anybody in the Galveston Oasis, they've been at our house and all the ladies go in the bathroom and go, I love this bathroom. So yeah, it's really nice. I love it too. Um, Oh, and like my husband, he wants me to tell this story. He was picking up some clothes, and he picked up a sock, and he's looking. Where's the other sock? And then it hit him. Oh, wait, she only wears one sock at a time, so there is no other sock. Uh, do I have anxiety when out in public? Not really. I get a lot of the... Um, And I want to go, yeah, it's gone. There's nothing there. Kids are very honest. They come up and go, lady, what happened to your leg? Uh, I have had one or two people come up to me and say, thank you for your service. <laughs> and I learned the hard way, just say you're welcome. Because the one time I tried to explain, no, it was three bad knee replacements, multiple infections. The guy got mad because I was trying to call him a liar. So, and the next question after that is usually, how did it happen? And my response is always, I'd just really rather not talk about it. Because you don't want to go into that one, believe me. Do I have phantom limb pain? Oh yeah. I have woken up in the middle of the night with a freezing left foot. Why is it sticking out from under the covers? And of course, when you're first waking up and then you realize, well, your left foot can't be cold because you don't have a left foot. Um, there's always kind of a pins and needles sensation. So it, they call it phantom pain, and a lot of time it isn't pain, but every once in a while, particularly, um, like I said, I just had revision surgery in July. The other day I had cramps in my left femur that were just killers. The only problem is I don't have a left femur anymore. So that didn't work. And what do I do when people stare? Like the dog, I just smile. Yeah, you know, come up and ask me. I would rather you ask me. Don't, you know, like I say, I get a lot of the side looks, like, 
is she really in a wheelchair without a leg? It's like, yes, I am. And um, that's everything I have to say. If anybody has any questions, nothing is too personal. I don't care, just ask me. Right there, yeah. Is this on? All right. Yeah, right there. You have a question? Go ahead and ask her. How did you lose? How did you lose your leg? I lost my leg because I had um, a knee replacement in 2010, and as a result of that, I got an infection. So they took that knee replacement out and put another one in, and I still had an infection. And so they took that one out and did a third knee replacement, and I still had an infection. And the doctors finally said to me, the next infection you get, you may not live through. So the choice was either get rid of the leg or die. So I got rid of the leg. I had 18 operations. So yeah, that's a lot of operations. We've got so, one back here. Thank you for sharing today. My question is, of all your friends, can you describe the best kind of friend you had during the whole process? I can't understand. Uh, my question is, uh, thank you for sharing. My question is, is, can you describe among all your friends the best kind of friend you had during the process? Uh, I'm very lucky in that most of my friends were very understanding. Um, in between transplant two and three, or knee replacement two and three, I had a friend who had remodeled her bathroom, and she had a rolling shower. So every Sunday, I went to her house and took a shower. And I got to tell you, not being able to take a shower for six months, they have these wonderful little things you can heat up in the microwave, and it's like a bath cloth with shampoo or soap and lotion in it. That's great, but man, getting in that shower, oh, wonderful. Um, I have a friend who's more than willing to take me shopping. Uh, we have a ball because she does the high shelves, I do the low. People like to go to lunch with me because I always get a good parking spot. I mean, you know, that handicapped placard does come in handy for a couple of things. Um, I haven't lost any friends. They've just um, adjusted to it. They come to the house and they're fine with it. I still go down and get my nails done at Vicky's and I have a little portable ramp that I take and she just comes out and helps me out of the car and we put the ramp up to get me into her little shop and I'm lucky that way. I didn't really lose any friends. Hi Liz, we have another question for you. Okay. Hi, man. We're so proud of we're so proud of you and all, uh, everyone else who have to learn a new normal and live in that new normal. We appreciate that because none of us who have been through that do not know what you are experiencing or what your family is experiencing. But my question is, how may we help you and others in similar situations? get the insurance to pay for these prosthetics that you need since I understand from your um, talk that you do not have that opportunity. Well, the insurance will pay for a standard leg like this. The, my insurance company paid for this. So yeah, they'll pay for a standard leg, but if you want to go skiing, that's on you. If you want to go um, scuba diving, that's on you. Um, all the Paralympic people and the um, athletes that are semi-pro with it, they usually get a sponsor. Now, I am joining a group called, uh, I am a member of a group called amputeecoalition.org, and they have something called a certified peer review, or certified peer visitor. I'm going to certified peer review. That's government, Liz. Duh. <laughs> Um, you have to be a year out from amputation, so I can't do that yet. But once that is, it's been a year for me, I'm going to become a certified peer visitor. And my biggest issue right now is there's a support group here, downtown, and there's a support group in Galveston. I live in Clear Lake. 
So I'm going to start a support group in Clear Lake because I know I'm not the only amputee in that whole area. There's got to be more. Otherwise, all the doctors, I mean, there's two rehab hospitals. There's three different prosthetic organizations there that do prosthetics. So I'm going to try and start a support group there. Any other questions? Over here. Hello. So I have two questions. Number one is um, how is driving going for you? How did you adjust to that? And number two, what's your schedule right now with like training for the new leg? Like are you eventually going to switch completely to the leg and like abandon the wheelchair? Okay, uh, driving isn't an issue for me because I lost my right leg. However, I will never drive another standard shift, which I actually know how to do. Or I lost my left leg. Yes, thank you, dear. Um, it's funny, we had a friend who had a standard shift beamer, and she parked at the Galleria, and she went out there, and it was obvious someone had broken in the car but hadn't stolen it. And it took us a while to figure out, well, they hadn't stolen it because they don't know how to drive standard. <laughs> Nobody knows how to drive standard nowadays. Um, I had surgery back in July. I had 19 operations, like this is my leg that went this way but the amputation went this way. And where they crossed, the scar tissue is very, very fragile and it was tearing. Because I was in the prosthetic, I was walking, I was wearing it at home to get used to standing on two legs again, which is a lot harder than it sounds because you just get so used to not having the leg. And so I had to wait for the swelling to go down. But uh, when we get back, we're going to a family reunion this next week. When we get back starting in October, I have to go in and get remeasured because this changed my leg completely. So this has to be completely redone. And I will start physical therapy again and start walking again. But I've been doing my exercises at home. I mean, I can 50 times with 10 pounds on it, I can do it. So I've just kept that up so that I will pick it up a whole lot faster than I did the first time. And I know it's weird when I walk, I have to go clench with the butt muscles swing, clench, swing. You just swing. I gotta pinch my butt, so I will always have a really nice <laughs> hiney. Liz? Next. We have another question for you. Oh, hi. Uh, I'm kind of part of like a smaller nerd community where like uh, open source prosthetics is like a thing that I know a whole lot about. I just don't know how much you're aware of that within what you've looked at, but it's like super exciting because this is stuff that is like 10% of the cost and actually developed by people who have to use these things every day. I, do, I don't understand. So yeah, basically open source prosthetics, it's like people print their own prosthetics at oh, home. Yeah. And uh, I'm wondering if you know about this community and that you can reach out to them and they might even make you one as like a project. Um, I haven't really looked into that because I'm not a big sports person, but I do have a friend who has a 3D printer and I've told him I want a pretty leg. Um, they're, they're, the movement, it's so fast now because of computerization and 3D printing and all the other things that they're doing. It's just, it's very hard to keep up with because it is very quick. And like I say, I'm not in the sports community, so I haven't really investigated that. I've just been investigating the parts I'm interested in because there's a lot of information out there. If you go to, it's amputee-coalition.org. Oh my God. Um, there's thousands of different kinds of legs and knee joints and foot joints. There's a computronic knee joint where you literally can just spin your leg in circles. Um, there's just a lot out there to absorb, a lot. But if there's a group that's doing that, then g I'm glad to hear about it because there are people that want to do things, but they can't because of the money. You mentioned earlier uh, about getting cramps. Uh, yeah, fan yeah. of cramp pain. How do you overcome that? I mean, when I get a cramp, it... I mean, it's so painful, and I have to get up and walk around. And so I'm wondering, how do you overcome a cramp? It all depends on what it is. Sometimes if I just massage the leg, 
it goes away. Other times, if I get up and do something and distract myself from it, like I'm feeling tingles now all the way down my left leg, but I can ignore it because I'm busy. Um, if they, I have nights where I don't sleep. It, I just can't get rid of it. I'll get up and go make a cup of tea. I'll get up and watch a movie. I'll get up and go get on Facebook. Um, it just depends on how bad it is. It, it varies all the time. They keep saying it will go away, and I'm like, yes, please. Yeah, like I say, um, typically if I massage, I can, um, it's like if you, um, you distract your body from the pain in that area. And there are techniques you can use. There's one called mirror box, where you actually have a mirror, but you do it to your right leg, and your brain thinks you're doing it to your left leg. I haven't had pain that bad where I need to do that. But there are people who have really debilitating phantom pain. I'm lucky I don't. Yep. The cramp is all up here because the nerve endings are still there, so they're still going to the brain. Yeah. 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 All right, we have a writing question. You've talked about the weight of your prosthetic. How does that weight compare to the weight of your other leg? Is there a difference, and how do you compensate? Um, they didn't weigh my leg when they took it off, so I don't know. I'm thinking it was about five to seven pounds just by what happened on my scale. And that's why physical therapy is so important. And um, I've been to physical therapy multiple times because of the multiple knee replacements. And I can tell you that if you're doing physical therapy for anything and they give you exercises to do at home, do them. There are so many times that people um, go to PT three times a week, but they don't do anything at home. Well, all the good you did learning to do that in physical therapy doesn't, like I said, I put a 10 pound weight on my leg and I do this 50 times. And I go to the side 50 times and I lay on my tummy and lift it up in the back 50 times because that helps, like I said, cl clench swing. Um, it's important to keep up your physical therapy, even after you're walking, even after they dismiss you. You still have to do that every single day. You're just, it's a fact of life. Uh, sorry, this is the last question. I really, I really enjoyed your presentation. Uh, just a quick question. Do you, is, do you, is there any legal recourse available to you for the first time that knee got affected, like any medical liability uh, you can do for compensation? That's I, what came to my mind when you, when you answered yeah. about what led to the amputation in the first place. I had a lot of people ask me if I was gonna sue the doctors. And at that point, I was so busy just trying to get healthy and get my life back under, I'm a bit of a control freak, so I wanted to get my life back under control. I didn't even think about it, but I am now in a class suit against the knee manufacturer. Uh, the first two knees I had were called Dupuis, and I've been contacted by a law firm that uh, they have found problems with the Dupuis knees, and um, they're saying, you know, there's hundreds of thousands of dollars that are gonna be out there for people, and I'm like, well, you know, if I get a couple grand, I can take a trip. <laughs> and they're doing all the work and they split it 60-40 it doesn't cost me a penny they if I get ten thousand dollars they get four thousand I get six okay I'm I'm good uh, this is Dennis Liz's yes. husband and he said after the question and answer he had a comment for y'all I just wanted to give a shout out um, we had a question about friend uh, um, <clears throat> How great uh, Galveston Bay Oasis has yeah. been as a friendly group. They're really living um, the core value of being accepted, uh, being accepting and being accepted. And uh, they really deserve a little shout out. 